Friday again. Um, <laughs> sorry for missing last Friday's video, but I'm just still with this DRO upgrade spinning in circles. <laughs> and more circles so i can't skip another friday so i decided let me um show what i've been going through um where my thoughts have been what i've accomplished what i haven't accomplished but first a uh, comment was left i think it was a comment or it might have been a private email about run out on the mill since we've been going through this collet stuff um, how the, the, the uh, comment came up that the collet nut can cause run out and I started thinking about it so I just show you um, my conclusion on collet run out looking at this thinking about it because of the comment that was left if you put the collet in here um, it it doesn't tilt. I mean, it's it's like the tapers are matching perfectly. So I'm thinking, you know, how could the collet nut possibly affect run out on this thing? But then, you know, you look at, all right, you put the collet in here and it floats around. So when, um, suddenly I'm looking at it going, all right. So this surface in here, is going to push on these so when you push this down in there like that oh, it's going to pop out but it's going to make sure everything is compressed correctly but if this nut is slightly off it can push one of these fingers in further away from the taper in the block or any collet chuck so yeah um, the collet nut can add uh, contribute to run out so what I did was I took a quarter inch collet with a quarter inch um, gauge pin and just jammed it up in the mill put an indicator on it and I've gotten uh, what was it? it was like something under a thousandth uh, run out on it then carefully pulled it out and made sure it didn't rotate or anything put the nut on it and put it all back together and the run out doubled so yeah these nuts can cause a problem now the um i didn't have bring i should have brought one here when i bought these i bought uh the square one and then the octangular one um hexagon whatever they came with nuts that had a bearing in it and i'm checking the bearing and yeah it's got some play to it so by luck, accident, not even knowing it, I figured, let me put the nuts with the bearings on the mill and on the lathe. And it's, that's why I've got uh, less run out on those machines than anything else. Because I'm figuring, you know, I'm, I changed it because I'm thinking I'm constantly changing collets in the machines. So uh why wear things out let's just put the ones the nuts in there with the bearings so all right so i'm going to share like i said what i'm doing here with the dro's and first of all this is just my opinion this is my observations this is my exploration of playing around with the um new eye gauge easy view dro plus so first i guess i'll show the receiving of them opening up the package and i'm pretty happy with it the dro's have arrived and i'm very pleased with them they came well packaged bubble wrap individual boxes very nice um uh taylor tool works it's the best price i've found in town any place and i'll put a link to their websites it's taytools.com um but when i bought these uh first time for my mill first mill they had three sizes um so i could get 
this and then there was another one up and then the 24 inch for the z-axis now it looks like they only have two sizes that I could find so I've got this is I think the 12 inch which one is this yeah 15 oh so they're measuring it in between nice 15 is from here to here um, so I got the 15 which will be for the y-axis and two 24s one's the Z and one's the x-axis and the nice thing is you can saw this now that I have a nice band saw I don't have to do it with a hacksaw um, they work great and I think it's a little sluggish but I can't tell in the beginning when I first turned it on I'm going why is there a delay in the in the uh, response time of all these things here uh, zero yeah. that's the one thing is you do have to push really hard on the buttons on all of them um, and then you can see it moves I did some playing around with it and they seem like they're accurate to a half thou but I won't know for sure until I get it on the mill and um, get a dial indicator on it so all in all pre pretty pleased read some of the instructions on things you can do which is really interesting so um what do you get with it you get you know the scale the head they give you a nice little bag of hardware all kinds of different stuff here nylon washers and all the mounting screws for this guy and you get an assortment here of let me move this up a little don't hit the microphone you get a few different uh, brackets here for different mounting they give you two three volt batteries which look nice and a really nice wrench too I forgot what this was for oh yeah <laughs> I didn't bring that out they give you a mount for the thing which is really nice tolerances too because look at that it just goes right in there so that's what the Allen's for is to tighten this thing down. So I've got had three mounts that I don't, I'm not going to use because they don't really fit any place on the mill that I know of yet. Put it on the top? I don't know. No, I can't because the way it, the DRO's mount. So I'll be figuring out how I want to mount them. But the really neat thing here is it mounts from the bottom. This is probably the same screw as a tripod, but you can stack them because you see the holes on top and they give you the screw that goes in there so you can just stack three on top and then the bottom one is going to be your arm or whatever you're going to do to mount it so I'm looking forward to that that'll be pretty nice because I'll just do XYZ in that order and it'll be easy to remember no problems um, the other thing is I bring a square over. I never checked these, but I always said in a previous video that they're incredibly touchy to forces. If you tweak this at an angle or that way, anything at all, the readings just go nuts. And I'm thinking that these aren't really that square, are they? Let's see how good a job they did. Yeah, no, that's off. Oh, that's off a lot. So what I was thinking about doing is you can see that there's just this cap and then there's the angle base. I was thinking of getting rid of this, machining a nice aluminum block that's perfectly square and then drill and tap so I can just sit this on top because the end is bent over. This piece goes down so it'll hide my saw marks so saw it to length um, mount my block down and I know I'm square and then put this on top of it and being loose I know I can do that kind of number and then I'll be dial indicating or test indicating because I want this sucker perfect on this lathe and I'll probably redo everything when I get around to rebuilding uh, my first lathe so all in all uh, Taylor tool works taytools.com fantastic place especially if you're into wood turning or woodworking but more wood turning 
Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say that. It's probably woodworking. But um, they've got some machinist squares that are really cool, and I should have bought it when I was already paying for the shipping. They've got that bottom on it, so you can like clunk, go up against something, and then check the square. And that would come in real handy when I'm trying to square up a compound. $11 for that one. So go and check them out. They've got a lot of woodworking tools and machinist tools and great stuff. I highly recommend them. All right, so far, so good. Um, pretty happy with it. Uh, so I'm going to move along, of course, and now I'm just going to attach it to the x-axis. It's the easiest one. So I'll show a little bit of um, attaching it, and then it'll be followed by another section of me showing a different part of it, how I attached it to the x-axis. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess the camera's in a good position here. So, um, first thing is the easiest axis is the x-axis, so I am going to have to drill a hole down here, and to get there, I could either take the table apart, or I can take the head off. It's so much easier to take the head off. By the way, um, I undid the two screws here, they're gone, and then loosened this to see what the head was going to do. I had it way loose, the head just wants to sit there. It's all balanced, which was wonderful. So I took that completely out, and then I could wrap my arms around it and just lie it down. Unfortunately, it's lying on the emergency switch, but uh, so. All right, so now I've got access here, and it was easy to drill and tap here. These are, what am I using? Uh, there it is, 832s. Very short 832s. Um, so, made center punches or whatever so the drill bit doesn't walk. Drilled, tapped, really easy, done. Um, actually, the way I've got it too, because when I took this thing off, they're pushed out. So, I need to loosen this and just get them more centered. But that's a side note. Um, like I said, from my first mill, if I... Um, had any sort of pressure on this thing in any which way, the readings weren't correct. It was just nuts. So I'm trying to figure out on this one, I'm going to make this sucker perfect. And so first thing I did was the gauge pin set. And eh, I don't like ah, whatever. I had them all nice and tight. And I went through and I found a gauge pin that just goes in there without pushing on it at all and then I move this all the way down here and the pin doesn't go in move it here pin doesn't go in so you take the, the allen wrench here and once when I tighten it I can actually see it bending this rail out so these are not square or originally I had put these on the um, comparator stand and just ran an indicator over it and it was only off by like two thousandths maybe three thousandths but evidently that's enough to really throw this thing off or to bend it because I'm not on this and I'm not on this side you know where that's like affecting it but yeah you know, definitely right here I can see tightening this up it's tweaking it in and this side's tweaking it out so choice is I can either play with these things and try to get them square or whatever you want to call it or I can just make my own blocks and I was looking at it going you know I've got to make something that goes from here to the back of this there's not much it's like two hundred thousands so if I had you know made a block like this and got it to fit just right I'd have to countersink to get these little screws not to hit this so this out of the junk drawer was just the right size but then i'm going to be faced with this problem of countersinking 
So I'm thinking use something a little bit thicker. This was what, 3 eighths, right? Yeah, one inch by three eighths. I don't know what this is, you know, one and a half by half inch. That would push it out quite a bit. Gives me a little bit to fly cut, square it up. And yeah, I have to cut it. Oh, I can use it this way and then just cut it. So I can get quite a few blocks out of this. And it's the right height, right? Oh yeah, it's like almost perfect height. Um, so all I needed is just the thickness of this. And yeah, that side. Yeah, so it's all right. So that'll work. I wish I would have made that decision before I drilled and tapped these holes because they're not on center, they're down low, but you'll never see this. So I think I'm going to just make the blocks and that way I know it's square and I don't have to worry about anything. And these guys, I can use the caps and they'll just screw right in. So that's the first thing is to try to get this so that this uh, doesn't flex at all. And I kind of remember I had a test indicator on this thing and it wasn't moving. So I don't know what gives here now, but in any case, I'm just going to make the blocks and put that on there. Um, then I got to try to get now from here down to here. And uh, you know that, because it's wild, there is a lip between the bottom here and this actual part. So you can feel it. I'm trying to measure it and I couldn't. So I figured, let me just try some thickness gauges. Three thousandths and it feels flush. So this part's sticking out this way, three thousandths over this. So I got to deal with that. But on the old mill, I did a block and made it work. And that axis is the most reliable. Uh, I have had it occasionally go nuts on me for unknown reason. But, um, so I'm thinking about using, there's that metal band that they package crates with. Find some of that, because I use that on the y-axis, because that way you can easily bolt it to this, and then you can bend it and play with it until it's like perfect, where when you run the screw in, nothing moves. <clears throat> and it, if I could find something even thinner, that would be great. So it doesn't put any force on this at all when you're traveling back and forth. So um, that would be good for flexing this way, but it wouldn't do anything this way. So onward and upward. So this is how I did it um, pretty much so on the other mill on the Y axis. This is five. Yeah, what was it? Where is it? Thick, thick, thick. There it is. It's like five thousandths, which sounds like it's going to be really thin, but no, it's very stiff. So it's perfect material to do it with. Um, just drill the holes in here, and then to get the get it so it doesn't touch, I had bent it straight up, and then put the gauge pin underneath there, which is the gap and then just bend it down and it lands right on it. There's no pressure or force or anything here. So, um, and then marked it for where the, the uh, screw is gonna go on the bottom. So I wanted to be able to move all around because I can't do final adjustments until I have the head on there and I can start putting dial and test indicators on it. But for now, all I'm doing, let's see, get that in, that in. So it's looking pretty darn straight. I hope it's going it should work. And then for, there's the square. I just want it flush with the top. So I'm just putting something flat there. Push it up against it and then just tighten it down. And I'm not going super tight right now because I know I'm going to be shifting this around. They're going to test indicate the entire top and make sure it's not crooked or whatever. So hopefully this lines up. I need to go with the marshals and get more of these screws. I'm on my last one there. 
Okay, so that's in there, that's in there, and there's the last screw, and it looks like it hits it right on the money. So I'll probably put a washer on this, I don't know. And it goes right in there, nice. Might be able to actually just try it right now. Let's see what it does without even. All right, that should do it. Yep, that does it. So turn that on. Probably bring it over more. The camera can see it and zero it out. Zero it out. There we go. There it is. I wonder if this dial means anything. I'm putting it on zero. Move it one thousandth. There's a thousand, yeah, huh? Two thousands. Bingo, not bad. Not too bad at all. All right, so I gotta get the head back on there now and um, start indicating it. Uh, that was the off button. All right, so it's mounted up and in the, in the beginning of this, I forgot to mention that I was going to make my own little mounts. So, um, I had um, decided to make the mounts because I wanted to make the machine, like I said, really cherry perfect. And then I started doing some checking and sketching up what it was going to take to make them. And I said, now change your plans. Let me just try to use the existent mounts, which is what you saw in the video. Um, so I proceeded along that channel and later on, you'll, I, I said, oh, okay, forget this, and <laughs> came back to the mounts. So here I am going in circles. But in any case, um, the next two pieces is first I'm checking the accuracy of the X axis, to see how accurate it is with the dial indicator, and then kind of thinking, well, maybe I've got kind of a sloppy setup, so after that I'll show you checking it again. But this time I've got a lot more stable um, setup to be able to look at the accuracy of it. All right, I know there's reflections in here. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can see the best and I'm trying to reach around the camera here and I'm using a magnifying glass. Zero this thing out. So if I move to, <laughs> I got this microphone cord wrapped around me. All right, so if I move this to 10 thousandths, there, I'm on 10, so 9.5, 10, 20 thousandths. And I know I'm going to be playing with this thing over time to get it all settled in. Is that 30? No, that's about 30. You know, go back to zero. So it's, I got to lean down to try to get it on zero. There it is, zero. So I keep blinking this half thou. Zero it. Let's go to 50 thousandths. Go all the way up. This is not the most stable setup I've got, but uh, I think that's on 50. 49 and a half. So I'm just going to eyeball it without the magnifying glass. There's like 30, yeah, 20 coming up. And 20, yep. 10. Oh, I'm at a bad angle for 10, so. Uh, let's try 70 thousandths. I can see that pretty easily, 69 and a half. So it's pretty good. Um, repeatable and within a half thou, I think that's pretty good. I think this is doing better than spec. But what's going to bug me is I can tell you right now, I'm going to need a rock solid back because you got to push pretty hard on these buttons or just keep pushing them over and over again here. You know. <laughs> Turn it off. Yeah, see, all right. I'm gonna open one of them up and see what they did in this design and why you have to push on it that hard. Oh, well, let's go to minus. If I go, oh, I just walked off my thing. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, the only way to get this in view and get rid of some of the glare is to mount it upside down. So you can see I'm zeroed out and take it to 10,000 here. 
Where am I? There. All right. Nine and a half, twenty thousandths. Mm, there. Nineteen and a half blinking. So, I don't know. It's okay, but twenty-nine, and I'm on thirty. It's. I mean, I couldn't get it any better than that. Thirty-nine, fifty. Is 49 and a half blinking, go back to 20. 19 and a half, see 30 was 29 before. And it's 29, so if I go up and I go back to 30, now I'm at 29 and a half. Go back to zero. And it goes back to zero. So hopefully it's pretty repeatable within a half a thou. Let's take it at 70 just for fun. There's 70, 69 and a half. Take it back to 30 because that was the problem guy. 30, 29 and a half. So it seems like it doesn't like coming up on one particular spot. Coming up, there's 30, 29 again. So, I guess you just gotta know your machinery, and... Alright, so now I'll show you if you're gonna use the stock mounts that they supply. Kind of how I had to tweak and bend and dial indicate to get it mounted up on the Z-axis. So here's the Z-axis work. So Z-axis, same kind of thing here, drill tap. 832 drill tap, saw it off to length, tighten down the, the angle pieces, this guy really tight on both, tighten him up good, but you can hear it, it just, it wants to bend it in, it's just too much, so I take a screwdriver, ow, and kind of shove it back here and tweak it a little bit, oop, that was too far, yeah. It's got to go slowly. And I'm going to have to undo that. Yeah, because I can see it bending over that distance. So I got to, I wish there was a way I can take it back in real easy. <clears throat> well, I just did it. Out a little bit. There, it's right there. It's just floating on it. So that's the spot. So then I got to put the top in and then let the bottom go to see if the top is tweaking anything here. Probably is. Come on, get in there. Sorry that my arm's in the way. So one screw. And I'm tightening them. I mean, when I got them first and undoing them from the factory, these things were really on here tight these the screws I'm doing right now so uh, I'm not going that tight but I am cranking on them pretty good there undo the bottom and see where it's at huh what's the bottom oh the bottom's just floating so it's right there I'm done now I just have to um, by loosening these guys, put a dial indicator on this to make sure I'm straight. And I don't do it by shifting this, I do it by shifting this. Because they're pretty much so in alignment now, they're within a few thousands. So you can just tap on this and tap and get it, tighten them down, double check it and you're there. And for this axis, on the other mill, I made a little plug thing that goes here and this guy attaches to it so i'll be dead center here riding in this up and down so i'll have full travel on it but i got the x the y and i'm almost done with the z here um, so this would be pretty nice and the z on the other mill sometimes it just goes nuts your numbers are way off and i don't know why Part of it was this was a defective unit. I didn't know it until I opened it up and there was a wire that was almost severed by a screw when they do it during assembly. And the angle piece that goes here with the scale, I'll wind up cutting it out 
like the other one so I can at, put, at least put it on there. Why, why not? So, all right, to the leg is what I do. The shim stock is working perfectly. I'm surprised. But, um, so I'll do the same thing. It'll be shim stock here. That way, if this guy flexes a few thousands, the stock can move with it. Um, this one ends up being a mount for an air thing or the light or something like that. But this gets filled, and I just got to figure out this gap. I guess now that I have gauge pins, I can do it. Just get a gauge pin that fits in there. So track five thousandths for the thickness of the uh, shim stuff, and make my little spacer. Okay, so now I'm starting to get pretty frustrated with this thing. I don't have a good confidence level in what's going on. So now here I'm still working on it I'm making all the mounts for everything um, and it turns out even with the mounts you think you put them down and the bar would be flat turns out the bar is bowed so you got to dial indicate the outside the top to level it it just goes on and on but um, I've got the x-axis all nice looks good so far um, but then I'm thinking about, you know, using these things, and now I'm kind of getting tired of it. The buttons, and uh, so, well, let me show you in, when, in my thoughts of mounting this or using the Easy View DRO Plus. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos on this um, Easy View. Yeah, I, um, but the, I don't see, well, after buying this, I don't see the video showing the details. So you get one of these with uh, every one. So I've got three of these arms to mount three DROs. And first, this guy moves pretty easy. So I had to crank down with an Allen wrench on this very very hard pretty hard I mean it was a lot it still moves and I don't know if I can go anymore I know over time this will be a maintenance item you're gonna have to keep cranking down on it as it loosens up but the first thing I noticed is you know it, even with it tight it's moving all in all directions and that's something I kinda don't like I like it nice and solid but when you have to push the buttons so hard, it becomes kind of irritating to me. Um, because like I said before, these buttons, I don't know why you have to push them so hard to get them to register. But they do have a nice little compartment. Oh, junk stuck to the magnets here. They do have a nice little compartment here for stacking them. But first, when I, the supplied thumb screws you put them in there and they bottom out and get one in so they're they're pretty darn long come on get in there look at this why am I having such a problem today mister uh, alright finally there it's in there and it bottoms out but that's yeah, it doesn't tighten it up so I kinda understand why now they're in, they include these nylon, Teflon, or whatever washers with them. So if you put this on there and you run it in there, now it kind of gets tight. Uh, I'm just going to be all thumbs today for some reason. Now it gets tight, but you can't really do it by hand because it just doesn't get there. You have to like climb on it with. Hey, look at this push push oh, the whole arm just moved so already I've got to crank down on this more um, so you have to climb on it with channel locks or something to get it to really stay put because the purpose of the nylon is to um, slide easily as I showed on other stuff uh, where's another one of these guys in this washer now the next one that kind of got me was it's very difficult to start stacking these guys because this just barely fits in there and you get the next guy on here and it's very hard to try to hold it because the magnets pulling it see it 
it's very hard but you know you you can get away with that let me try doing this yeah that's not gonna work huh there finally got it to go yay but nice they have little um, bumps here that go into a recesses so they stay together as a unit but now the problem is it's so uh, I can get it as tight as I can there that's completely tight now the problem is you can't get needle nose or anything in here to get it any tighter and what you can see here is it you know and you're gonna have three of them stacked up so I don't know how to get it any tighter than that uh, it's moving more it still rocks so you I just can't get this thing tight enough so that that rocking doesn't occur it still rocks so uh, for me this arm um, this whole thing they just don't show you this in the videos how kind of difficult it is use three arms no so all the videos where I've seen these guys actually in use and done I see all three of them mounted on something else they're not using the arm and they're not stacking them together so that's just kind of my input so far one more item that I discovered quite by accident going through YouTube videos on the easy view, you know, the eye gauge thing, is one video the gentleman was showing the half thou uh, five. Uh, he had bought three of the easy view, no, I think he was on the other ones, but uh, in any case, he had three of them and nothing was moving. He didn't have the scales mounted up yet, and the half thousand just kept blinking on I think it was two of the three it would just all by itself you know say a half thou then off then on then off and in the video I guess somebody um, recommended that he swap the heads but the one that's blinking with one that's not just swap the two units and he did and said that it's still blinking but now every now he's got three units that are blinking and I didn't know about it, so I turned on all three of mine with nothing moving. Two of them weren't blinking, but one of them, yeah, sure enough, the half thousand was just randomly coming on and going off. So I swapped two heads. Uh, you know, you just unplug it and undo the screws, and I swapped two of them, the one that was blinking with the one that wasn't. And I'm guessing I'm lucky because now I have three units that don't blink at all. So I can kind of move this axis here. Which way do I got to go? There. Yep. So it seems to be solid now on all three of them. So that was just kind of another little heads up um, to point out. So like I said, this is strictly my opinion my observations my comments on this um, so I'm looking at these things you know, I like the old eye gauges and if I could have gotten them I probably would have bought them because um, this was just mounted up and you're done those guys are skinny with the plugs coming out on top if I had to mount these things sideways I showed in the last video, I was thinking, you, you can't mount it on the top because this is going to be a mile long. You can't use the arm. Um, so I had bought a steel plate that I was going to bolt to the back of the column and then just mount them down below on top of one another using the magnets. And so I'm saying, you know, this is getting ridiculous. So I know a comment was left a long time ago and I found it about blue DRO. So, um, I'm starting to go that way right now. I'm not done with it, um, especially since I need to find another smartphone or something to run the app with, because I'm running it on this camera right now just to check it out. So, I'm going to show, um, ooh, wow, something stuck in the cord. I'm going to show receiving the blue DRO. And since I'm learning on it here, I am starting to write the manual for it. 
because I'm finding information is scattered all over the place. So hopefully I can put it in one central place. But that's where I am right now. So um, I'm going to try going down this channel. It's looking uh, pretty good so far. So here's the blue DRO. It arrived. Blue DRO. I just pre-cut it to save time here. Let's see. Empty box. Okay. Some kind of probably instructions. Oh, what do you get? Thank you for purchasing Blue DRO. Yeah, please visit. Mm -hmm. But it requires you plug your scales in first. All right, I'll have to read the instructions here completely. Uh, this should be the unit. And it said and power supply, which is kind of nice. But I've got so many power packs, it doesn't matter. Yeah. There's the power supply, and there's the unit. And the connectors should fit in there, right? Yep. Don't know which one's which yet. Which way does it go? It goes in there this way. So this will be nice. Mount this on the back of the mill column. All the DROs in there, and then I'll test it with the phone that's recording right now. And it all works out well. I'll buy another phone or a tablet or something for the application. So this is what you get. Works pretty nice. All right. 